Good morning and welcome to this service of the word for Ascension Day. We were ushered in there by some bars from the Lark Ascending and I'm up here on Leith Hill with most of West Sussex behind me as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Ascension Day greeting, God has gone up with a merry shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days now, we've been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He's appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today, we recall how he left this earth and returned to the Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne at God's right hand. Let us hear the story of his parting, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. So when they'd come together, the disciples, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he'd said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were still gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing now our first hymn together. Hail the day that sees him rise. Come on. 
canticle for Ascension Day. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Our act of penitence. Christ has gone up on high, leading captivity captive, bringing gifts for humankind. As we prepare ourselves to meet him in the courts of heaven, let us call to mind our many failures and sins. For the kindnesses we failed to offer, for the comforts we failed to give. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the damage we've done to your created order, to ourselves and others, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the fear that holds us earthbound when you call us to raise our gaze, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and for ever. Amen. And the Collect for Ascension Day, let us pray. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and for ever. Amen. We hear now our second reading from Luke. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, beginning to read at verse 44. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm here on Leith Hill today because it's Ascension Day. The day when Jesus returned to the heavens, before the very eyes of the disciples who were with him the last recorded appearance of Jesus Christ here on earth. He was with the disciples and then as we heard, he was lifted up or taken up into the heavens and out of their sight. And it's that upwards movement, which we recalled also in the Lark Ascending that we began with, that's brought about the tradition of celebrating ascension in high places, on the summits of hills like this one, or the tops of towers, college towers, church towers, Indeed, Leith Hill Tower, which is just before me now as I talk to you, would have been just great, but of course I can't get access to it. I think the sentiment is simply, nearer my God to thee. 
Ascension Day. And we've heard this morning the two accounts of the Ascension from the New Testament, from Luke and from Acts. The risen Jesus on earth, a group of witnesses who see him ascend and then see him no more. Clearly it's the same event that they're both describing, although if you look at it more closely, the chronologies don't match. In Acts, this happens 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, and that's the time scale that we keep now, whereas Luke seems to have it happening later on the same day. Take the longer view, though. Here's a little visual representation of Jesus' comings and goings, if you like. As we're on Leith Hill, I've made the background um, a picture of Leith Hill. Here is God in his heaven, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And down here we have the earthly realm. And this dotted line between the two also represents very loosely our human construct of time, not in any proper linear fashion, but progressing in that direction. So we've got back here God's action in human history through the law and the prophets. And then we come to the point where God comes down to earth in the person of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, and Jesus' birth. This is then the 33 years that he's on earth. And then we come to the event of today, the ascension. Jesus goes back up into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. And lastly, we've got this additional arrow and that's Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes down from heaven. But back to today. Jesus has gone up to glory, to his throne above the skies. He is King of glory, the source of all sovereignty, and he is those things for all eternity. Some of the words there from the hymns that we're singing today, describing his ascension to glory. But looking at this longer view again, I also wanted to show you how this event, today's Ascension event, is prefigured way before we ever had the New Testament records in Scripture. Right back here, in fact, in God's Old Testament action in human history with the law and the prophets. One of those prophets is Daniel, and he wrote this. Just compare it to what we've heard about Jesus' Ascension. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming into the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. That's Daniel writing there, centuries before the birth, resurrection and ascension of Jesus, in a prophecy that foreshadows his ascension. One like a human being, says Daniel, comes up with the clouds of heaven. One like a human being, an alternative rendition of that is Son of Man, one of the names of Jesus. And he comes up in the clouds and sits next to the Ancient One as Jesus takes his throne next to the Father. And he's given everlasting kingship and dominion over all peoples and nations. Just as Jesus is this day too, risen, ascended, glorified. So today Jesus is gone up with a merry noise to reign forever and ever. But let's come back to that last element of what we heard about in today's scripture, because now we're still waiting, like those first disciples, for the promised counter-movement. Do you remember that in both Luke and Acts, just before Jesus ascended, he said he would send the Holy Spirit, that red streak of lightning that was on the picture? This is what he said. See, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here until you've been clothed with power from on high, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Jesus ascends into heaven, but he does not leave us alone. He sends the Holy Spirit upon us. Now for us, that happens next week at Pentecost. And I'm not going to be waiting right here until then, but I am going to be waiting expectantly for 
the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. And for today, well, as the risen Christ ascends unto the heavens, let us too raise our gaze to where our Lord now sits at God's right hand in glory and graciously to intercede for us. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We sing now our second hymn, Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. And after that, we have our prayers of intercession. Let us join our prayers with those of Christ our Saviour, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. The response to Lord hear us is, Lord graciously hear us. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for the Church your broken body in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God. Pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection. Surround your saints and angels, those who have died, trusting your promises. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe. Pray for us who receive the gifts you give us for your work, for work in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, risen, ascended Lord, you teach us to call God our Heavenly Father, and so we pray. Our Father, our Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Caroline, and thank you, Jonathan, for the reading earlier. And thank you, each and every one, for joining me on this day of our Lord's Ascension. The blessing and dismissal. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful servants of Christ the King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And we conclude our worship by singing, Name of all majesty. <laughs>